Good morning. It's Sunday morning, about 11 o'clock. 40 degrees, the sun is shining. It's gonna go all the way up to 50 degrees so today. So bright. <laughs> so we're gonna go out. Do we need to redo that? No, I just, I'm not <laughs> used to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. What is that? Got the maple syrup already boiling this morning. Yeah, we started uh, collecting sap last weekend. Within the matter of a couple days, I had like 10 or 12 gallons. We boiled that down. Um, it got really cold over the week, so it froze up again. Mm -hmm. The last couple days, we've had a little bit of a sap run. So we're just gonna head out today and start collecting sap that we've collected over the last two days and get it boiling down. And later this afternoon is when it goes, the temperature warms up even more. I'm gonna go out and put some food on my bees. Oh, yay. Check on them a little bit. So it should be a fun day. Yeah, I'm excited. I think I actually have to go get a sweatshirt though. It looks warmer than it feels. Yeah, once we get working, it might help. Yep. A lot. Is that good? Yeah. I hope he's recording this. You guys watching? Yeah. Well, look at this. Ooh. That's like half a five gallon bucket. Nice. Same, probably a third of a bucket. Good. This one's from the side yard over there. This is walnut. We're not keeping them separate. We're just mixing them all together. Maple, walnut, and box elder. So um, I opened this bucket and I don't have anything coming out of it at all. I never have. And I can tell I tapped it before. Todd doesn't think it's a walnut, which is always hard to tell this time of the year. I thought these were all walnuts. I'm gonna go tap one back there instead. Um, it might be an elm, I guess, because that's the only other thing I could think it would be. Nice, that one is definitely running. Woo, get them all cleaned out. Can you see that, Chad? Drip, 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 pouring. Just want to clean out to the hole so you can, your tap doesn't get clogged up. Okay. I think I can fit, this is a really big tree. I think I can fit several taps in him. Rachel's gonna go get another tap for that one so she can double tap it. I'm gonna go back there is where the box elder ones are. We'll go get those ones collected and bring those ones up and dump them ones in the cooker while she's doing that. Well, not a ton, but we'll get it in, get it boiling down. So one of the things about this syrup when it's raw like this, when it comes straight out of the tree, you have to do a couple of things with it. If you just let this sit here, within a week, it's gonna have mold in it and it's gonna go rancid. So you either have to boil it down, reduce it down right away or freeze it if your temperatures are cold enough. And generally outdoors, if it's cold enough to freeze your sap, your sap's not running. So it's that weird double-edged sword situation going on. Box elder. In the hole. Alrighty. That's exciting. This one's good. I don't have any more buckets though. So let's go check those elder trees now and see how they're doing. I already went and checked them. Oh, <laughs> did you get, get yeah. the sap? Yeah, I harvested it already, put it in oh, the pot. Oh, okay, cool. They were like, they had like five inches probably in each. Oh, nice. That's probably about what? A gallon and a half? Those are five Yeah, our buckets. cooker is pretty full. Good. What next? Uh, I was thinking chickens. Oh, okay.
Okay. Shh. I'm filming. All right, you guys have been in my coop lots of times. And if you're new to my channel, I use my chicken run for compost making. And it's about that time of year. They worked all winter. Um, there's been multiple, multiple layers of straw and yard waste, leaves, mulch thrown in here. I need to get this stuff piled up, let them work it down again. I'm gonna go ahead and do the early spring uh, it's not early spring yet, but soon. I'm gonna do the uh, coop clean out, put some fresh pine shavings in. It is nasty funky in there from all winter. So this is gonna be some serious manual labor. Better. That is a nasty job every year. Is that the first time you've ever helped me deep clean it out like that? Yeah, that was <coughs> disgusting. Whoo, nasty. I even had to get one of my coronavirus masks out. <laughs> so I got some fresh pine shavings we'll put down. I'll do it. Went a lot faster with two people. That usually takes me a good once a year, two hours to do by myself and you know, to stack, clean it out, stack the mulch pile. So, thank you, thank you. Just needs to be spread. Yay, happy birds. On to the bees. Back inside for a quick lunch break. Todd is, what are you making? Mm. Oh, it's really dark. Sorry. There we go. Uh, canned roast beef. But I'm cooking up some onions, some red onions first, some garlic and ginger, and then I'm gonna add this with some kind of Asian sauce, maybe like teriyaki or something like that. Yummy. And I am making up some homemade chicken salad with the canned chicken that I canned last Friday. But at first I have to make some mayonnaise. Dan made us some homemade chocolate chip cookies this morning, and they are good. She's been practicing, trying to find that secret recipe to take back to Vietnam when she goes back. <laughs> she's been having fun. She's got a big, giant list of all these things she wants to make before she leaves. Your chicken salad turn, looks like it turned out good. Mm -hmm. My roast beef is good. Yeah. Hoisin sauce. Oh, oh yeah. You mean, I saw you put ginger in it? Yeah. Homemade bread, almost everything's homemade except apples. Haven't grown any apples yet. <laughs> Hopefully this year. Yeah, something exciting yeah. if you guys. Food in your beard. 
You put it back in my dish? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. Something exciting happened this weekend. If you didn't catch it on our Instagram or our Facebook page, mm, yeah. tell them about it. I'm going <laughs> Why? You're just talking about your food? <laughs> on our YouTube uh, channel, hit 220,000 subscribers this weekend. Thank you, guys. That's so awesome. Thank you. Thank you for all your support, your comments. All the thumbs up you guys give us, the encouraging words, and especially those of you who share our videos. That's like the biggest, the biggest gift yeah. that you mm -hmm. can give to a YouTuber as far as support goes is to share their videos yeah. on your own Facebook page, on Facebook groups. That way it's not coming from us, it's coming from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Shares it, that's like the biggest gift that you can give to somebody, so thank you. Yes, super thanks. and. I mean, it goes all the way down to just community partners that we've made in the YouTube homesteading community that have supported us and encouraged us. Mm -hmm. We've made so many wonderful friends through just um, our viewers commenting. And we feel like we have this like extended family. We had an internal joke between us because we're both introverts. We'd say, we're going to throw a big party and invite all of our friends. <laughs> <laughs> we have like five friends between the two of us. And so now we have this really awesome extended friend group. And mm -hmm. we love having you guys here with us. It's always crooked. Signs of life at the bees. Heck yeah. Hive number three, the smallest one, the weakest one, the one that I thought was going to be... Toast, really. Toast, yeah. yeah, not survive. Has the most bees flying around it. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Hive two, I mean, our original hive, hive one, the strongest one going into winter. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. But well, we're going to pop these. Uh, I'll start down here at the end at hive, the one of the strong hives, hive number three. And we're just going to basically check for food today and put on some pollen patty for them and see if there's bees there. So this here's hive two. This is one of the strongest hives that I had. It was one of the heaviest going into winter and it's still quite, quite heavy, but I don't see any live bees. You have bad hearing. Do you want me to? No, I think there's bees in there. Oh, really? Yeah, put your ear down there. Oh yeah, there's bees in there. Okay. Don't mess with them. Okay, so we're not gonna mess with these guys. I'm going to make some room here. Yeah, I hear them now. I'm going to make some room here. Can you grab me one of them pollen patties? Yeah. Thank you. Do you just put it on like that? Yep. Oh, okay. It'll just eat right through the paper and plenty of food, plenty of sugar still. Now they have some pollen patty. Oh yeah, there are bees in there. Yay, good. I'm not hearing much here. Much or nothing? Oh, uh, I think nothing. Yeah, I don't hear anything. So yeah, that's one thing that I gotta be careful of. Even though it's 50 degrees today. It's 30 next week. It's still February. Yeah. So we need to protect them accordingly. As much as I want to crack the seal and pull this top box off and check the bottom box, I'm not going to do it. Because if there are bees in there, that I'm going to break the seal on it and right. then they're going to have to reseal it and that's extra work and extra effort and extra energy. So We'll call this one a mystery still. By far the most active Hive number three, which was my weakest hive. It was a, basically a single deep going into winter. And they seem very happy. That is a ton of bees. Yeah. Very happy, very active. Chowing down.
All right, good job, bees. I wonder where they're all going. They must find some food somewhere or they're going to get a drink or something. So that's pretty promising and encouraging. Okay. Although, my very first year of beekeeping, I was in the exact same boat. We had two hives, it was the end of February. I checked them, all the bees were there, they were all happy, and I went back two weeks later and they were gone, so. Yeah. We'll keep being gentle with them, keep babying them, and. Uh, he was thinking maybe go ahead and put out a feeder uh, of the sugar water, right? Yeah, maybe on warm days, like today. Maybe a small one, that way when it gets cold and gets freezing, I can put it back away. I don't know. Yeah. What are you guys' thoughts if you're, uh, is it too early to feed liquid food to the bees? Or do we need to wait for spring to really be here for real? Well, can you remember what they said last time when it was like the end of February, early March and why? Because you had done the same thing. We checked, we made sure they had sugar. <laughs> if I knew the answer, we wouldn't make that mistake again. <laughs> Maybe we need to go back and watch that video and read all the comments and see if there was a golden nugget in there. Yeah, well, we took honey from them. Oh, yeah. We took honey from them and they starved. Oh. It just feels weird. Okay, well, wish us luck because I really want honey this year. I mean, most importantly, I want my bees to survive, but we have them here on the property um, for honey too. So hopefully we can get some honey. Boots on, we still haven't caught our chicken, our rooster. When we were cleaning out the coop, our rooster escaped and he's out there somewhere. I warned my neighbors and told them that, hey, if you see a rooster in your yard, it's ours. We can't catch him. We haven't figured out a way yet, so. <laughs> yeah, he's really skittish. <laughs>